the book Breath uh, um, that we're going to cover today talks about anxiety and breathing and how we can help our anxiety through our breathing and our, our performance uh, um, in sports, she has a lot of inf- great information about that and her health. So this and this asthma and sleep apnea and the, yeah. my my dad has. So I want to go into that. Let me introduce our guest okay. today. Okay, our guest today is James Nestor. He is a journalist and has written for a lot of high profile magazines. He's also a very prolific author. He recently, most recently, wrote Breath, which is uh, Breath, the new. He most recently wrote Breath, The New Science of a Lost Art, which is now a national bestseller. It's going to be translated into 30 languages next year. And our James does, doesn't just sit behind a desk all day. He actually participates in the subject about which he's writing. In his, um, for this book, he did his own studies on himself, which we'll go into. And he also wrote a book Ian read it in his book club and loved it and kept, he'd read it and he'd be like, Alexandra, read this about whales and, and how they have such good sense of direction. So anyway, in deep, James went under the sea with free divers and um, he's won just so many awards for that book. And it's also been translated in a lot of languages. And then he wrote a book called Get High Now Without Drugs. And I'm curious what he did personally to, to, to research that book, too. Um, but we'll have to ask him and a lot more. <laughs> James Nestor, welcome to Switch for Good podcast. Thank you for having me. So we want to start off with um, breathing. Dotsie and I both discussed how we had been told that we weren't breathing properly. Can you talk a little bit about right up front how we're not breathing properly? Because a lot of the audience might say, huh, this, this show's not for me. I breathe just fine. I've been living for the last 40, 50, 60 years. Well, a lot of people think that breathing is a binary thing. If we're doing it, that's good. We're, we're alive. And if we're not, that's bad. We're, we're dead or we're unconscious or something bad has happened to us. But it's really not. It's how we breathe determines so much of our health and in some aspects, our happiness. I know that seems crazy and it seemed crazy to me when I first went into this field and started talking to the experts, but the writing's on the wall and the data is very clear. If you think that people aren't breathing properly nowadays, look at how many people have asthma, how many people have COPD, how many people have sleep apnea, snoring. I mean, I could go on this on, on down this list and it just shows you that we've completely lost touch with this, the most simple and profound biological function. And because of that, we are now suffering from so many chronic diseases. They are linked to our inability to breathe properly. How do you think we've lost the ability? Did did we ever have it down? (laughs) Yeah, we had it down great, just like every other mammal, right? There's 5,400 other mammals and they all seem to breathe just fine. But if you look at humans, we all have these diseases, uh, so many of them are respiratory diseases that other animals don't have, and that our ancestors didn't have. So this was the first question I tried to answer, is why are we breathing so improperly? Why do asthma rates continue to go up year after year after year, and allergies and chronic sinusitis and sleep apnea? And it turns out that so much of this is tied to this anatomical change that has occurred in our faces over the last 300 years. So if you were to look at an ancient skull, it would have perfectly straight teeth, this very forward growing face, this huge jaw. Modern skulls, about 90% of us, I'm a great example, have crooked teeth. Our mouths have grown so small that they no longer have room for teeth to grow in straight, so they grow in crooked. And this means that we also have a smaller airway, smaller mouth, smaller airway, breathing problems. And no one's refuting any of the science. It's very clear. You can look up a zillion ancient skulls and you can see their faces, and then you can look at modern skulls and see what's happened. It's just there was so little awareness of it that really shocked me. It doesn't make sense biologically that we would do something so bad for us. What are we doing wrong then that has caused our face to change so that we're not breathing? Pro- or what came first? Our, our face changed and then we were, didn't breathe properly or we weren't breathing properly so our face changed? 
Well, life is always changing, is always evolving. So if you look at a skull from a thousand or for several hundred thousand years ago to one today, it's very different, but that change happens at a very slow pace. So animals are able to adopt to it and, and adapt. And we were just fine. Our ancestors were just fine. But the changes that happened in the last few hundred years happened so quickly and so suddenly that we haven't been able to adapt. And so that's why we're breathing so poorly. So the main culprit here is lack of chewing because of a highly processed diet of industrialized foods. So teeth can grow crooked within a single generation of eating industrialized foods. And we saw that in the 1800s when all of the processed flour and processed rice and baked goods and soft stuff and bottled stuff and canned stuff really started spreading throughout Europe. And then we saw it very quickly in the US as well. So again, there isn't too much controversy about this, even though this sounds like some crazy hypothesis, it's not, <laughs> there's, there's very clear science. But a lot of people haven't looked at how those changes have affected our ability to breathe. And that's what I really tried to dive into on this book. It makes sense that it would that our if we were not uh, practicing and using our muscle muscle blah you know what I'm saying muscular structure and our bone structure of our face by chewing you know harder denser foods cruciferous vegetables and nuts and seeds that are harder that it would just waste away I mean that's what the rest of our body does it makes that makes sense to me that our that our mouths would have become smaller over over time even just over the last like 200 years from industrialized food. Yeah, and that chewing stress starts in infancy. So mm -hmm. you look at, there's been studies that have been done with this. Uh, kids who have been breastfed, which takes a ton of chewing stress and helps to actually pull the face outward mm -hmm. and flatten the upper palate to make for a bigger mouth, they will suffer from less snoring and sleep apnea later on in life because mm -hmm. they have larger airways because they're using those muscles. Mm -hmm. So bottle feeding is not the same and, and feeding a kid you know, a bunch of soft mush for the first years of, of his or her life is not going to really increase that masticatory stress to build the skeleticature and musculature to develop a proper mouth. And so, you know, this is just rampant throughout society. Uh, this is exactly what happened to me. And that's why I had braces and extractions and headgear and everyone I knew had the same thing. So uh, it's just the fact that we consider these things because they're so rampant to be totally normal now, like it's normal to have braces. Well, our ancestors never had braces and they had perfectly straight teeth. So something has gone wrong here. And how that all relates to breathing is I've, I've found to be a pretty fascinating area of research that not a lot of people had peered into before. So thank you so much for tuning in today. If we helped you in any way, then click the subscribe button and let's keep hanging out together. We have so much more to share with you. And if you need more information on actually making the switch for good, please visit us at switchforgood.org for loads of info. And you can subscribe to our mailing list where you will receive all sorts of super cool gifts discount codes to our very fave dairy-free products, and a lifetime of powerful health tips. So join us on the journey to switch for good. This is the future.